Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm posting this video to give you a better sense of how to handle uh, this problem, which appeared in Section 6.1 and which gave uh, several folks some difficulty this time around. And so uh, I wanted to give you some insight into some of the nitty gritty details. But the thing that, that I'm always trying to get you to concentrate on is the big picture approach. And so I want to focus on that but also help you out with some of the details uh, that might might help you understand this problem a bit better. So this is an example uh, of that problem. It says there's a line through the origin that divides the region bounded by the parabola, uh, and there's the equation, and the x-axis into two regions with equal area. What is the slope of that line? So the idea here is that we've got, uh, I've drawn a version of the parabola here. I'm just gonna draw a quick uh, new version of the parabola and the idea is that we've got this parabola and a linear equation that goes through, and we want to find the slope of that line. We don't know the slope of it. We want to find the slope of that line that cuts this area into two equally sized pieces. And so we want that yellow area and the blue area to be the same. So ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to find the total area, because that's actually not too hard to do, and then we're going to cut that in half. And from there, uh, we're going to look at the integral, um, the, the integral uh, to find the area that I've shaded yellow there. And we're going to set those two things equal to one another. So in other words, we're going to find the total area, cut that in half, and that will give us a value that we're aiming for, uh, for the yellow area or the blue area. But it turns out, I think the yellow area will be easier to find because it's really just the area between the parabola and the linear equation. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to find the total area, which I've labeled here in green or, or uh, drawn in green here. So in order to find that total area, I'm going to have to integrate under the parabola. I'm not worried about the line just yet. I'm trying to find the total area. And so in order to find that area under the parabola, I need to find out where those two x-intercepts are. And that's pretty easy to do. That's just algebra. I just set the equation, the par parabolic equation, equal to zero, do a little bit of factoring, and solve for x. And I get two values, x equals zero and x equals two-thirds. So that actually gives me my two values for uh, my limits of integration. You can see uh, step two here. I've plugged those zero and two-thirds into my limits of integration. And then I'm just integrating the parabolic function. And when you do that, it's just a simple application of the power rule, and you should get a total area of 8 27ths. Now, remember, I don't want that whole area. I want to actually cut that area in half. And so the area that I'm really looking for is 4 27ths, and that's a, a number that's going to come up in a little bit. Okay, so now let's introduce the line and get a little bit more detail here. And so... Uh, I want to cut that area 8 27ths in half. And so now I've drawn that picture again with the yellow area that I'm looking for. And in order to find that area, I need to integrate between the para uh, sorry, the parabola and the line. And in order to do that, I need to have the limits of integration again that go from zero to whatever this point is. And I don't know what that point is because I don't know M. So how do I find that point? Well, I set the two equations equal to one another. Again, I'm going to solve uh, for x and do a little bit of factoring, setting, you know, getting one side equal to zero, um, then factor. That leaves me with x equals zero, or this thing in parentheses equaling zero, which means x has to be four minus m over six. So those are my two uh, endpoints, and those are my two limits of integration, zero and four minus m over six. And again, I'm integrating this yellow area, so it's the parabola or the quadratic equation minus the linear equation. So there's the quadratic equation minus the linear equation. This is my fourth step. I'm trying to find that yellow area. Now remember, that yellow area eventually is going to equal 4 27ths. But before I get there, I want to get an expression for what this area represents. So uh, I'm going to integrate. I'm going to use the power rule again. And when I use the power rule, I get this, and then I just need to apply these two limits of integration. Now, before I apply those limits of integration, I'm actually going to factor out a 2x squared, uh, because 2x squared shows up in all of these um, terms. So when I factor out 2x squared, 2x squared comes out front, and I'm left with this in the brackets. 
And when you plug in the 4 minus m over 6 into the x, that's going to go here. I'm going to square it, and I'm going to square the 6. And then it's also going to go here. So I'm going to have 1 minus this guy minus m over 4. Now notice when you plug in 0, the, the 0 in front here is going to cancel everything out. So this second, the second piece of the integration uh, just disappears. Now when you uh, simplify all this, you're going to get uh, 2 over 36, which is 1 over 18, 4 minus m squared. And then if you simplify this thing in brackets, you get this 1 third minus 1 twelfth m in parentheses. Finally, you end up with, if you uh, factor out uh, 1 twelfth, you can factor a 1 twelfth out of here, and you're going to get another 4 minus m. And so you end up with 1 over 18 times 1 over 12 times 4 minus m cubed. Now remember, what does this mean? This represents the area, this yellow area that I was trying to find earlier. And remember that yellow area we already found the size of, it's 4 over 27. And so if I take this equation, or sorry, this expression, and I set it equal to 4 over 27, just do a little bit of algebra, multiply both sides by 216, take the cubed root, and solve for m, you end up with this value here. So you could type this into my open math or the decimal approximation. So those are some of the nitty-gritty details, but don't forget the big idea. What we were doing is we found the total area, and then we set up an expression to help us figure out what half the area should be, because we didn't know m. And once we found that half area, we set it equal to half of the total area we found in the first part, and that was it, uh, enough to allow us to solve for m. So I hope that's uh, helpful. Uh, remember, keep your eyes on the big picture as often as you can. The details are important, but the big picture ideas are even more important. So uh, when you run into trouble with either of those things, I hope you'll let me know.